Hey everyone, so we're gonna dive into Chainlink today and do a price update and I'm gonna give you what I think are the two most likely scenarios for Chainlink from current prices. Now at some point in the future, I do think it's gonna be really cool to look back at these videos and we were speculating about 200 um, you know, dollar chain link. And when that happens, it's going to be pretty cool to look back. But I do think, you know, given that the macro outlook on the economy and the way that risk markets are behaving at the moment, especially with, um, you know, our base case for Bitcoin, that I do think that we're probably most likely to move lower before we move higher. Now, let's get straight into it. So, Chainlink has essentially been in a downtrend. I think that that is evident to see. Um, and we are continuing to make lower highs and lower lows on Chainlink. So I see one of two scenarios and we're gonna go through both of them in a moment. The first one is that we potentially move up into this 20 to $25 level, create a lower high and then move into this seven, eight, nine dollar region that we spoke about before, potentially maybe even create a lower high on this weekly and monthly time frame, uh, and then potentially, you know, reaccumulate and then move higher. Or the second scenario is that we basically come and move down into this level and we, you know, chop around, maybe move up, and then we may maybe make one final push down to this level down here, which I wouldn't be surprised to hear at about that five dollar level and the reason for that is because i've spoken about untested order blocks before and you can see as well that Chainlink has done this in the past where we essentially broke up to new highs okay consolidated made one final push down retested old highs and then continued to move higher and you can see that at the moment you know we may well be playing out a similar scenario where we've had that impulse and we're getting this sort of um, you know, bigger, similar pattern to what we got over here back in, uh, you know, December 2019, early 2020. Um, and maybe we are, like I said, just trying to look for and form that bottom on Chainlink. We've spoken about low volume areas in the past before. And if you haven't checked out though my video on the VPVR and how to use it, go and have a look up above. I'll see if I can remember to link it. Um, but you can see that, you know, I wouldn't be surprised for us to potentially, you know, come back down, test some of these, uh, you know, lower levels where we've got puncturing wicks down before in the past. And I have said that I do think that if we do reach down here any time in the next month or two, I think this will be a viable bounce at the absolute very least because we've got low volume over here. And, um, you know, I think that, you know, likely, likely support will come in over here. If we to, were to fall somewhere below, you know, these lows of about $7 and we did that immediately, um, which I don't think will happen quite so fast, then we've got this massive void over here. So that's why we say that the next level below that is gonna be this massive order block um, somewhere in this price action from about $5 or so and, you know, below. Now, in the immediate short to medium term on Chainlink, I'm looking at two key levels, both above us and below us. Now, let's just get out the way, you know, some of the uh, lower targets, because for me, this is pretty simple, is that if we take out this level here at about $11.50, this low that we created back in February, I think that we will move down to these lower targets that we spoke about, which would represent a, uh, a downside target move of about 20 to about 25 percent i wouldn't be surprised for that to happen and i would be you know i think that if we did break this it would probably be quite a quick and quite a violent move and we would just be continuing you know these these lower highs and lower lows that we've been creating and that would just be the next most logical target is you know somewhere down in this region however if Chainlink can manage to hold these areas i do see some potential upside here in the event that uh, you know Bitcoin maybe moves to potentially 53K or manages to hold and then Chainlink can do a little bit of its own thing. What I am seeing here is a potential head and shoulders that may be playable, something like this, okay? And we do have a lot of this void to fill over here where whenever we get these massive drops and they're quite sharp, okay, we do tend to retrace at least, you know, half or, 
you know, a little bit over half of those moves. And then we continue to move lower, which is why I think if we take out um, 18.4, 18.3, I think that we probably likely do move straight up to about this $22 area and if we bring up our vpvr on the daily as well you can see that again this is our low volume area our first um, low volume area to be taking note of uh, and again that might just be um, some sort of lower high again and maybe we move somewhere into this area and then we move lower that's what i see as the most likely scenario um, you know i think the highest that we could potentially see um, chain link go to in the same way that i mentioned about bitcoin getting to about fifty three thousand dollars would maybe be somewhere in this you know horizontal support resistance zone over here um at about 34 30 35 30 dollars uh, if we were to manage to you know take out some of these highs okay at about 38 dollars is the only way that i could be long term bullish on Chainlink because what you'd want the structure to look for over here is essentially if we were to somehow miraculously you know take out this um resistance zone above us take out some of these 30 and mid uh, mid 30 dollar ranges and we were to deviate above that we'd be looking for you know uh, potential um you know re retracements to buy into to to create structure of uh, you know, creating higher highs, higher lows, and then, you know, basically set the chain off in motion to move higher. But like, as I said, at the moment, I don't think that is the primary base case. There's no reason for you to believe that Chainlink is all of a sudden going to magically going to create new highs. Um, even if you think that we're going into April and May, which might be typically good seasons for altcoins um, and crypto to perform well, we are in a systematic downtrend. And until we get our first sign, the absolute first sign that we might be, might move any higher is going to be that thirty. Uh, sorry, it's going to be that eighteen point four dollar level. Now, if you're a chain link holder like myself and you are team link, go ahead and drop me a like down below. That massively helps me and the channel. If you're getting some value from the video as well, do consider subscribing so that you can keep up to date with all the updates on chain link and the other altcoins. And without further ado, let's crack on with the video. Interestingly enough, from this impulse that we've made all the way down from uh, about $29 all the way down to $11.5, the, the 0.618 is going to be somewhere here at about this low volume block at $21, $22. So this for me for sure will be that first level to be looking out for before any continuation higher. And it is important as well just to remind you that we have been in a downtrend for a full year for Chainlink. And I, although I do think that that price and that moment to reverse back to the upside will come, there's nothing in the market that's showing you that at the moment. And, you know, we've for the first time um, in Chainlink's history after a massive move of holding all of these key Fibonacci moving averages, um, all of the key ones, we've basically, you know, moved down and we are just loitering down below that weekly and monthly, you know, 21 moving average uh, and all the other key, fib key Fibonacci moving averages. You can see that as well on the weekly, but I'm just showing you here on the monthly that, you know, that um, although we're only just starting to form um, that 34 uh, EMA on Chainlink on on the monthly time frame, where is that 34 going to start to come in? It's going to start to come in at about that um, you know eight to seven to nine dollar area that we spoke about as the next support level. So if we don't manage to get above these moving averages anytime soon, uh, uh, at again at about twenty dollars or so, and we do make that next leg lower sometime in the next month or so, look at this to be the main area for buyers to step in for Chainlink. Quick update on Link Bitcoin, and you know that I like to trade, you know, those sort of clear horizontal support resistance areas and, you know, uh, see if we get reactions there. So if you look at the key one that we are exactly at at the moment, we might lose this area. Now, if we don't see support at that 3,500 Satoshi level, the next level, the next clear level below us is going to be that 1,500 Satoshi level, which would represent quite a large uh, drop of another 50% in Chainlink. Now, I'm not sure if that exactly happens, and maybe there's a different dynamic going on there with Bitcoin, but... Um, 
you know, that is definitely one area that we want to be looking out for. And if we actually take a Fibonacci of the entire move to the upside, we are also at that currently um, key area of that 7.618 of the entire move, which is that 3,500 level, which has been why it's been such a key level to hold. But um, also seeing some support over here at about um, 2,400 Satoshis, which is uh, some of the previous pivot swing highs and lows. So that's another area that we want to be looking out for. So 2,400 and 1500 will be the next areas if we drop below 3500 for Chainlink Bitcoin. Last quick look at Chainlink Ethereum. I've left in all my doodles from last time and shown you the key levels to look out for both above us and below us. And if I drop this down to the daily time frame, we were looking at this potential order block to give us some support and you know challenge some of those higher levels if we were going to go higher. But you can see that we're currently losing this area. And if we don't manage to hold this um, whole area over here um, at about 4,400 um, on uh, Chainlink ETH. Then the next level below that, in my opinion, would just be this cluster of price action to trade um, all the way down to about uh, you know, two, uh, 0.002 ETH. So uh, we might find some sort of bottom anywhere in this area or vicinity over here. If we do start to reach these levels, I would be looking for some potential bottoming patterns like high volume candles, or I'd be looking out for you know um, ascending triangles and you know basically bullish patterns at the bottom of the range to tell us that we might be ready for some sort of reversal in Chainlink Ethereum. So I hope you got some value from that video. And if you're a Chainlink holder like myself, drop me a like down below, subscribe to the channel so you can keep up to a date with more updates on Chainlink, all the other altcoins and Bitcoin as this crazy market develops. Until the next one, I will catch you in the next video.